Hi there guys, it's Liz and I'm setting up for today's Instagram live demonstration and I just want to say hi. I'm so glad you guys are here and we are cop I'm this is a continuation of my class with my students through the art league my master copy class that i am that i am um that i am that i'm working on and yeah i i'm really having so much fun working on this piece um we're copying this this painting called the peppermint bottle at the principal gallery and or not principal at the national gallery of art and guys I'm trying something new today with a different speaker that, or like microphone. Could y'all give me a thumbs up if y'all can hear me? I want to make sure that that it's working fine and 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 all that. So, let me know. Okay. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate the thumbs up. So now I don't have to to worry. I know that y'all can hear me well, and hopefully this will allow me to continue to be able to talk when I'm, you know, turned around and mix at my palette and mixing, because in the past I haven't been able to. So that works out great. Um, okay, so I I I'm kind of I've been working I was working up here. I need to finish this peppermint bottle this guy so I'm gonna work today in that and let's see if I stand here I don't think I'll be in the way hopefully I won't be in the way of the present of it and oh yep I do I do get to that point where I, where I cover up so I'm gonna have to move the camera just a little bit because where I need to be and where um, let's see okay that will so there is more painting over here but so that way you you can see far enough away you can see enough of the big picture all right let's get going i am so excited about today we are um, gonna have a really phenomenal little demonstration i am so i am having so much fun with this peppermint bottle this is by paul Cezanne, and it is a continue and um yeah, so let's get going. So I am gonna get going. So what, one of the things I love about this work, oh, I just realized my proportions of my bottle is just a little bit off, so I'm gonna have to fix that today. I like, I like fixing things when I notice them. Like with my students, I've been saying I'm not paying that much attention to the draftsmanship as um, as I would like when we were studying Dutch still life, because exactitude with Dutch still life is kind of the the focus. Where where with Cezanne, it's really more about the the color rendering. But at the same time, I do want to have a certain level of of accuracy. So I'm gonna I'll. I'll work on that just a little bit. So I want to get that in. Okay. So I like having my edges wet. And these guys are. So that's helpful. I'm gonna... Cezanne was really explored, you know, shifts in color and temperature. And it really makes for some pretty wonderful um, visual effects. Let's see, I'm gonna, and his edges are soft. So like while I'm copying too, I'm trying to pay attention to some of the nuances of his edges. Okay, um, there we go. Yay, yay, yay. Oh, I need to squeeze out some more Prussian blue. So 
Cezanne in this painting used a ton of Prussian blue pigment, which is um, fascinating. And because that's a color that I don't use, I don't have often out on my palette. Where are you? And one of the reasons why I don't keep it out so much is because it's, it's a very powerful staining pigment. It's dark, dark blue, practically is black coming out of the tube that kind of tints towards green. Um, but you know, it really makes some pretty wonderful mixtures. So I'm mixing right now some Prussian blue with Cad Yellow Deep. So with this copy, I am not making a true 100% facsimile of the way Cezanne painted in that I'm not using his historic palette. I am, I am using like the palette that I use mainly, but I, like I did add Prussian blue to my, my palette, but I'm not like, he also used chrome yellow. That is a color I do not use. He also used emerald green which is an extremely poisonous color so i'm not using that one but i am you know i am using prussian blue because it is such a strong and important color for his for his setup I am, um, yeah, and I realize I'm used to not having a microphone on, so when I go to mix, I'm I quiet, because in the past, my um, microphone was not, um, was on the opposite side, so then I, you wouldn't be able to hear what I was saying if I was continue talking, but now you can because of Get that in. I so this is a continue. This is a part. This is like an extra perk that I offer to my students that I'm teaching an online master copy class, and it what it does is that it gives me more time to spend time with my students in the classroom. Our, um, our online class but you know it's you learn so much from doing w from watching artists do painting demonstrations so it's an opportunity to keep to keep demonstrating for my my students and and I really I really love painting doing painting demonstrations too so that that also makes it fun so I get to continue to paint and do these painting demonstrations and I'm and I know I need to fix uh, work on that red but it kind of feels like I need to work in this adjacent area real quick so that's what I'm doing and I really like the textures that are in Cezanne's paintings are so fun and I'm having you know it's I'm really enjoying this exploration of of it's you know of texture and and color And making master copies is one of my favorite ways to learn too. I'm always surprised by how much you can learn when doing a master copy. So they have been, it's been a predominant part of my own learning experience. So that's probably why I'm such a proponent of it. Okay. That needs to be a little bit more vibrant. So, so I'm mixing Cad Lemon with my Prussian Blue. 
and there's just a couple of really vibrant greens and that might actually that may need to be extra so I'm trying to get a couple of those vibrant green color notes in on this peppermint bottle I think okay so I think I've got enough of that in to start to raw sienna and there's like a little bit more raw sienna right there and then uh, looks like so so Cezanne used vermilion in his painting with as one of his colors on his his historic palette so I don't use ver like the traditional vermilion I use cad red vermilion as a substitute and it's pretty similar as the historic vermilion it's an op cad red the historic vermilion was an opaque warm like poppy red so kind of an orangey red that then had um that was you know very was a very dominant mixture and so cad red happens to be a an opaque color as well so it works out really well and then let's see now this is I'm gonna get that guy in and get to that vermilion and then let's see then we've got like right there and then there and then it starts to shadow and what I'm noticing is that it looks like the shadow shape was just painted on top so I'm going to first get and create a mixture of cad red and cad red deep. I actually need because that one's a little bit more orangey where this one's redder. So I'm going to get that in. And I'm going to actually raise it just a little bit. So, I'll also shift to that guy, but um, there, that makes it a little bit easier, so I don't have to, to kind of like slump. edge goes like that and then let me how does it go it kind of goes right there so that needs to be built up and that needs to go down to the bottom okay Now, if any of you guys have questions, you're welcome to ask any questions. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep painting and keep kind of chattering as I'm going along. But so still, you know, this is a mixture of cad red deep. I did have a little bit of ver vermilion. So see what cad vermilion looks like that cad red deep. Is like, and then this has gotten a little adulterated by the Prussian blue. But that's cool because my, you know, the form is shifting and I will be adding and changing soon to that and then let's get so I'm going to get that guy so I'm going to have to work on that guy which I will do right next I want to make sure I'm thinking about everything and then like okay so there's a little bit of that red right here on an apple so I'm going to quickly just that become and then let's 
like that red is right there as well. And I'm going to put that in. Not quite that pure. So we'll have I'll have to adulterate that just a little bit. I'm taking some of my Prussian blue that I have and I'm going to just swipe down to, to add a little bit. Looks like there needs to be some right here too, so I'm going to do that. Um, and there's a highlight, but I think underneath that highlight is a little bit darker, so I'm going to put that in. And there's this line right there, just like there's a line right there. Okay, so okay, thank you guys. Thank you guys for for you know being here and supporting this Instagram live. So okay, it's darker. So one of the things that I noticed today when I was working on this um, in class is how important it is kind of get your values accurate your the cut you know the and to really look for the nuance of color and values so that's what I'm trying to do today I'm really I'm I'm trying to make sure that my my values are are shifting as they need to and that I'm I'm being like responsive to the all the nuanced color shifts that I'm seeing in in this painting and, and so it's really you know it's it's really asking me to slow down and observe so even though like Cezanne's paintings look really kind of fast and kind of like prior to me copying this I kind of thought they were rather slapdash and um, and I'm learning you know that's you know that's always how it is you you might think it's a certain way until you start copying it. And then when you start copying it, you're like, oh, this is a lot more like um, in depth, intuitive. Um, there's, there's a lot more going on than I, what I, you know, I first thought. And that's that I love. I love that about, about painting and, and copying. So Yeah, so there we go. That's really fun. And it's, it's darker, so I need to get a, a darker color note right here. So I'm going to get that in. And then I will. Okay, so uh, one moment. I, I see that there's a long question, so let me... Let me take a quick moment and investigate that. Let's see, what does it say? What is the best way to adjust our color on large areas? Should we just do it on the second layer? And if so, should it be as thin as the first layer with solvents? Um, no, y you'll do it. You'll adjust it with your second layer. Yes, but I wouldn't make. Don't thin it down with solvents. Use use like straight from the tube. So like everything that I'm adjusting right here, like, so that's new, but everything that I'm adjusting over my previous layer, I'm using straight from the, you know, I'm, I'm not using, it's not thinned down with, um, it's, it is, it's straight from the tube. Uh oh, something just happened. Okay. Phew. I, I, my computer just kind of like thought it, I thought it shut down. Like we had a, like a brownout or something. But it came back on. That was scary because um, I am using my com my computer to help me with my photo reference. Um, 
but yeah, so so no, I wouldn't I wouldn't use that. Do you use a digital reference or print on? I'm using a digital reference. Um, like this is a painting that's at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. And they provide, if you know, you can download a really nice digital image um, or a, a pretty good digital image. It's not as high res as, as they used to be, like say four years ago, but they're pretty high res. So, um, but you can, so you totally res, high res enough that you can, you can do what you need to do with them, which, you know, that's, you know, when it comes down to it, that's what, that's all you want. You just, you want to be able to paint and do what you want to do with them. Um, okay, so. So I'm getting ready to start adding some of the, the lighter values. I'm like reinstating some color marks, like right there. Let's see. You worked in, okay, do you, are you zoomed in on areas you work or do you look at the whole picture as a whole? Um, I do both. I, I use, I use Photoshop as, um, to organize my photos and in Photoshop you can have multiple windows open at once. So I have like, I have the whole thing since this is a big painting, I have the whole thing, um, I have one window open where it's the whole setup and then I have one area that's zoomed in a little bit. It's not like zoomed in super, super close, but it's zoomed in a little bit more. So it's giving me just a little bit more, um, like, uh, so I can like look at some of the nuances of the, of the brush strokes. Um, but I, if you, if I'm just zoomed in, what will happen, I've had I've tried that once before and it didn't work. So, um, so, so I encourage you not to do that. If, um, even if you're like, um, drawn to do that because it, it, um, it doesn't always work. So, um, and so that I am shifting to a little bit of cobalt blue because my Prussian blue is a little bit too green. And there's a couple of areas here that need something that's just a little bit softer. So I'm using a little bit of, um, of cobalt blue instead of the Prussian blue that I was using before. Let's see. Yeah, that's working out pretty good. Okay, and so so far this painting is a pretty is a pretty constrained palette. So I'm using like raw umber, um, not raw umber, raw sienna, some burnt sienna in a couple places, yellow ochre in other places, and. And it's a whole lot of Prussian blue, but now I'm starting to get to where it's like, oh, it, there's just a little bit more nuance and more shifts. So I'm adapting and moving things through. And like the goal for this painting is for me is to really just expand my experience of Cezanne. So like, I do want to paint to a, a certain level of accuracy, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to like beat myself up if I, if I, um, don't quite like hit the mark everywhere. Um, the goal is to, to, to like, my goal with this painting is to get to a point where the, the, this exploration hit will make me explore my own work that I'm creating with a little bit more variety. Um, you know, maybe it'll ask me to be a little bit more expressive in my, with my backgrounds or to, to, you know, to, you know, just, just to push a little bit more. And, um, and so that's what I'm doing right now. In fact, actually I need to get this guy. There's a stripey thing. So I'm going to get that guy in. 
and get that in. Oops, got to clean my brush. Picked up some colors. Let's get that in. And one of the things is like, you know, it's the brush strokes are are kind of, you know, they're they're expressive. They're not um but they're not sloppy, um, I guess is the best way. So they are loose, but you still kind of want to be painting with a sense of, of like determination, I guess is the, you know, you, it's like, you know where you want that brush stroke to go in relationship to everything else that's going on with, um, in that painting. So, okay. So I'm really liking how that, that's looking. Um, there's, of course, areas that I can, like, fine-tune, but I'm going to start moving on to other areas. Get that. Okay, so let's get this guy needs, this part of the, of the cloth needs to be further established, so I'm going to get that in. Um... darker. So I'm going to get that edge in. And then there's like a, a dark edge there. And then there's like a cast shadow. So I'm going to get that cast shadow in. And I want to get, it goes all the way to here. So I'm going to get that guy in. Um, yeah, so this is really turning out to be pretty fun. Pretty fun copy. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's a little bit cooler and more blue. So I'm going to make sure I get that in. It's also a little bit darker, so I need to get and that edge is a there's more going on there. And then what color blue are you using in that area? I am using okay, so I'm using lighter versions of what I was using in my background. Um, and then the lighter colors are my whites that I had mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre, or, um, but they're lighter in value. I just added more whites. So it's, I'm not having to make many new like paint puddles or paint mixtures. I'm just like editing some of the paint mixtures that I was using for the background and for say this bottle and like even areas of that and so on this side goes all the way up to so like sometimes when I want to measure I triangulate so like I want to look at the apex of where this guy is like right there and then I look in relationship to what's going on there like um, and so then I call that triangulation I'm triangulating my coordinates so I might also compare that to what's going on vertically, horizontally, in one direction, and maybe even in another direction. Okay. It needs to be a lot darker. So let me get that. Right here is a lot darker. And then like the green, the, there's green like right here. So I'm going to need to get that green. Isn't that fascinating? And that's because of, okay, so I need to, there's 
there. And then there's a way to get that. And then right here, there's this. That's kind of darkish. Okay. This is turning into being so fun. Sometimes when you start painting, you, you don't know how fun something's going to get until you get into it. And then when you do, it's like, holy smokes, how amazing is that? So that's um, that white, this white bit that I'm adding right now is very important the to the concept to it and then that's important too I need to get that white bit in and then get that in yep nice Okay, so I, this is a piece of fruit, so I'm going to try to get that fruit in. And I think I want to work, I'm going to work there first. So, let's see, let's get that, oops. I think, yeah, I do think that's darker, so I'm going to get that darker. Because when I squint, this area here is almost the same darkness as that actually just a wee bit darker it's, and it's a, a little bit more green blue but see look at that that's almost that's like the same background color practically um, so I'm essentially using just variations of what I was using for my background um, it's a little bit darker so I'm gonna put a smudge of that darker in and then I'm gonna capture that and then right here, let's get that in. Goodness, that's so fun. Okay, so now I want to get, I want to shift my, okay, so there's a little bit of where it's kind of yellowy here, so I'm going to use my white with a little bit of yellow ochre but then it definitely is cooler there and i have used up my white for today so i gotta actually squeeze out some more white this is such a fun 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 exploration and so now when when painting you know you're always having to think about um, a sense of of scale and direction and I want to make you know I want to make sure that oops that might be a little bit too much but maybe not you gotta squint you gotta squint your eyes and look at the values even when working from photo reference, I find that it's very important to be still squinting and making those color, you know, those color and value decisions. Uh, that's actually more, and then that. Soften that edge, and then uh, soften that edge clean my brush because I the mixtures that I was using before I don't want to I don't want it to influence my brush strokes too much right now there we go yeah okay so
There we go. Okay, so I gotta like, reorientate myself. Where do I want to work? I want to work. I actually really want to get this area set up. And I want to work on that fruit too, but I think this, I want to get like the hump and like those folds, which then means like the hump, this area right here of the folds, that area of the folds. So yeah, I'm going to squeeze out more paint and then Okay, and I'll show you. So I'm using RGH Artist Oil Paints, and I'm using their Criminance White with a lead, with a lead white, um, a le linseed oil base. So it's, I am just really loving the RGH paints. I started using them last year around this time, and have just. They, they've become my predominant lead white that I use. I do have a couple, like I have other tubes of lead white because I like to experiment. And, you know, if you, get, <laughs> I've been to several conferences. And so then you, you get me in front of a bunch of paint salesmen like Michael Harding or um, the George guy from Rublev Natural Pigments. And essentially I'm a sucker for for um, a good paint, uh, you know, a good paint booth. And I buy all sorts and experiment, come home and experiment with them. And yeah, so, and I have, let's see, where are you? There you are. And one year I came home with the Michael Harding's Criminance White with Rublev's Lead White number one and number two. And, and just, you know, went to town and had fun with them. But lately I've been really liking the, the RGH lead whites. So that is what I've been painting with the most lately. Okay, so I need, okay, so that, I need to darken that. And then that needs to get darker. And that. Okay, so. Let's see. That's my mixture. That's my mixture up here, I think. So it's a little bit more blue. And so this is Prussian blue mixed with actually a little bit of cad red deep and it's um it shifts it gray you know a kind of a more bluish gray um, and that's because prussian blue is a blue green and then you got you know a cadmium color is a you know is a red and so red and green are color complements so essentially you're 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 pushing the complement on the color wheel, you're pushing the, comp the color complements together. And then that does lead to a, um, you know, and when you mix color complements, you get a desaturation of your colors. Um, so, And so when you desaturate a color, that goes more gray and yeah.
edge is folding. So it's not as dark what's on here, but it's definitely not catching the light. So uh, Cezanne captured that with kind of like this muddy um, color. That's interesting. That's an interesting color. It's what did I use? I used um, uh, raw sienna with my mixture of Prussian blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. I think is so. Like I've got all these like random mixtures in my paint puddles, and so that's what I'm using. Um, I'm like dipping back in to different areas. It might be need to be darker. So let's and then this is my mixture of like almost pure pure yeah that's like pure Prussian blue and white and when it tints down it really cools down let's see did you say that? yeah I do Sharon I use a little bit of cad red deep to get kind of a, that this kind of that impression blue and cad red deep creates a really nice great um, gray so does ultramarine blue and cad red deep as does um, um, cobalt blue and cad red deep I really love those th those mixtures and in fact um, you could and you'll find that gray repeated over and over and over again in the in impressionist work in fact the like monet claude monet i copied a painting by claude monet several years ago and i was struck by all the amount of grays he had in it but they were colorful grays they were like cad red deep and like ultramarine blue mixtures and they had you know, and then you would lay that like a, so you'd have that colorful gray and then you'd lay a vibrant color on top of it and they would just, th those colors would just sing. And by coincidence, when I, last night when I was researching for the Cezanne historic palette, I came across a quote about Monet and how even though, you know, he would use his expensive new pigments like the, the the chromiums, the, the cadmiums, because cadmiums had just got invented in the late 19th century to make his grays. He, he didn't use like the earth tones to make his grays. He would, he would use his expensive brand, you know, pigments to make his grays, which I always, which I found last, when I was reading that last night, I found that very fascinating. Get that. Okay, so this is just having a ball moving my paints around and getting paint down like okay so I need to get, I need to work on that a little bit more.
Okay, so like I think that's the right color, but when I compare, I realize my value right here is too, what I have on my palette is too light compared to what Cezanne had. And that this shape is too big. Um, so I'm gonna kind of fiddle with that just a little bit. I'm gonna first soften some of my shapes and that will help me then like re-sculpt it out. And I've got, it looks like I got like five more minutes before I have to go, but so that's perfect. I can get, I think I can re-sculpt that in the next five minutes and kind of get that going the way it needs to be. Thank you, Antonio, I appreciate that. Um, okay, so let's, let's regroup or let me think. Okay, so what I wanna do is I'm looking, I'm gonna look and it looks like from, like from here to here might be the darkest. But then there's a lighter, it's still dark, but it's a little bit lighter than what's going on, the mark that I have from here to here. And then the mark that's that value looks like it's up here. And there is a dark layer, but then there's other areas. So I wanna, I wanna get those in. So I've got this, so these are my paint puddles from when I was painting the background. and it, And Guys, remember in the class how I mixed um, Prussian blue with an area with burnt sienna, the transparent red oxide? So I actually just dipped into that area again, and that might be way too dark, but I'm gonna use it to help me structure, but uh, it is too dark, but it'll be fine because I'll rub it in and like mix it on the canvas. So I think that will work. But what I'm realizing is that is what's going on right here. And I need to make this, you know, I, I need to tighten up this shape just a little bit. So there's a line here. And then there's, if I triangulate, there's this line right here. Uh, so like this is, I need to fold that more. I need that to roll more. And right now it's not rolling like it should. That's okay. Um, and then I've got something going on there. That's the darker gray though. So I don't need to, it doesn't need to be that. The color I've got on my palette, on my knife, my brush right now. Um, and then I want to follow this curve just a little bit more. So it's like right there. And then it comes down and then it's like right there. And that is too di deep in value. What size brush am I using on, on the image? Right now I'm using a number three, Extra Long Filbert by Turkel, Hog Hair Bristle. And my painting is, the scale is tw 30 inches wide and 22 inches tall. So, and the original painting was like 35 inches wide and 24 or 25 inches tall. So, what is that? That's like a 15% reduction in scale of the original piece. If I can't quite, it's been a long time since, and I'm not so good anymore at, at like doing my percentages in my head real fast, but I think it's about that. So I'm still using that darker color, but what I'm gonna do is, so I wanna like get that one area Okay, so now I'm gonna use, okay, so I'm gonna pull off my brush and I've got, you know, I've got that much left and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fuzz because I have some paint. So I'm gonna just, you know, push paint around that's on the canvas right now to help me like get my values. And it looks like that might be a little bit too blue so I'll have to warm that up with like yellow ochre, I'll do the same, see I'm gonna fuzz that a bit. I'm gonna do the same thing there. This guy needs to go lighter in value. And like that needs to roll more. So, but that, so that was a, that was a, a great position of rebuilding. So now it's time to get, um, where do I wanna go? Actually. So I've got 
my dirty brush. I never wiped it off or cleaned it with odorless mineral spirits, but I added a little bit more yellow ochre and um, white to create some of what's going on over here. Okay, I'm really liking that. Yeah. Oh, and it's a little bit more gray right here, so I want to get my too dark. So I'm gonna I can soften that. And then I'll put that in. Okay, so let's soften that by getting it lighter in value a bit. But not too light in value, just a little bit. Just a little bit lighter in value, but not too much because I don't want to like blow it out, like make it too light in value. Squint my eyes, that looks right. Nah, that needs to be a little bit darker. This needs to be softened. That edge, I'm going to soften that edge. Um, and then. Okay, need to squeeze out and then let's get a little bit lighter. This right here, it needs to go lighter. So I'm going to soften that. And then, yeah, okay. So, guys, I am, I would say I'm done for pretty soon. Um, Instagram's going to cut me off, and I don't like it when they cut me off because then I can't save the files and like the Instagram live goes into like a nowhere's land but so I'm gonna have to stop real soon and then like you know this area needs to yeah and then let's get that and the truth is let's get I'm going to do one thing real quick just to create a value mark. Um, and that is straight, pretty much straight Prussian blue. That goes. I need to thin it down with a little bit of OMS since it's my first layer. And I'm going to get that in. Actually, it needs to be just a little bit lighter, so I need to mix it with a with some white so it's not straight from the tube there is just a little bit of change in the pigment so i've lightened it just a wee bit with white there's stuff going on and then this guy i want to get that dark value in right there and then that will be yellow. Okay, guys. I think I got to stop because I, would, I don't want to be kicked out. So that is my session for today. I really am thankful. I am always, always thankful when you guys show up. Um, I just, you know, please know how much I appreciate you showing up and spending this hour with me watching me paint. It's so fun to paint for you guys. And also I just, um, and I like, I like exploring and doing this stuff. So thank you, thank you so much. You guys have a really wonderful week and I'll see you next week. Um, for, the, for my students in class, have fun with this copy, um, you know, if you start getting frustrated, remember to just slow down and like really kind of absorb an area if you need to. And, you know, and um, you don't have to do the whole painting. You know, I'm, I will probably finish where I finished tonight. And then, and that will be my copy for, for the, for
for th for this one or my my effort so thank you so very much i i really appreciate it and yeah take care bye bye